Yeah. Uh, here we go. So I'm here with Kelsey Fox Bennett. Boy, did I say your name right? You yeah. did. I mean, like, you have a lot of parts to your name. Lots of fancy parts. <laughs> I know. I love it. So I love what it. are you up to? What, are, what What's your current project of interest? Um, so my big news is that last year I launched my book baby, Aria and Everyone Else's Feelings, is now live and in the world. And I'm I'm really proud of it and so excited to share it with the world. So what inspired this book? So um, it's based off of a highly sensitive kid and the inspiration came from one of my kid clients. And Mm -hmm. when she walked into my room that day, or, you know, when we walked into a session that day, her mom was sharing how she had taken on the big feelings of everyone else from something that had happened at school that day. And it felt like I was, of course, I was helping her, but it felt like I was sitting with a version of little me. Mm -hmm. And I remember doing a version of what I share in the book with her and wishing I could hand her something that had another kid that was like her, you know, because it's one thing for me to say I was like you when I was a kid, but it's another thing for her to actually see another kid like her exist in the world um, and use a tool like I teach in the book. And so, and like I shared with her. And so it really was like, this book doesn't exist yet. And I want it to, I want to be able to hand it to sensitive kids like me who take on the big feelings of other people. Representation matters and being able to to show people they're not alone is such a powerful, beautiful thing. So I'm really grateful and proud of you for bringing this book to life. And you you also have a a, a line of work that you, you mentioned this was a client that you you help people work through their big emotions. What's that practice called? Yeah, so it's just my own personal practice, but with the the main um mode that I use is brain gym. So I'm trained in a thing called brain gym that is educational kinesiology, simple intentional movements that you do with your body that reduce stress and reconnect areas of the brain. And it's something that I grew up with. So it became second nature to me. And while it's amazing for education and for, uh, for reading and for physical development, I came to love it because I was a highly sensitive kid. I came to appreciate it for those things, but really love it and use it most for emotional support. So when my parents went through a divorce and I was experiencing big feelings throughout the course of my life, brain gin was something that I used to help me feel more relaxed, more safe in my body. Um, When I watched a friend get hit by a car and die when I was nine years old, one of the first things I did was a brain gym session, and that helped me again come back to my body, feel safe, and be able to express and process some of the emotions. And so while I know other educators and other even like um, physical therapists and occupational therapists who use brain gym in their practices, more specifically towards education and body work, Um, I, my preference, because it's my passion is to use it for emotional support and rewiring. So, um, so yeah, I work with all ages and mostly these days I'm doing consults. So if you have a highly sensitive kid in your life, if you're a parent or an educator and you're like, I have this kid and I really want to give them love and support, but I just am not sure how. Uh, then I do a consult session with you by Zoom and give you tools and support that you can then share with that child in your life. So wow. that's beautiful. So you shared a little bit about why you got into the the brain gym work, which thank you for sharing that story. I think more people um, need to connect with the vulnerability of why we do what we do. And mm-hmm. you've always beautifully shared that that's that's part of your journey. Um and you did inspire, you did share a little bit of your inspiration behind the book, but what is a piece of advice or inspiration you would give to someone else who wants to write a book or or follow their dream in general? Yeah. Well, I would say keep going. <laughs> I feel like the two biggest things are keep going and ask for help. Because 
I remember I had been working, I had created a draft, I had, you know, kind of gotten to a point and then I got a little stuck and I hired a book coach and the book coach helped give me advice and she directed me to an editor and, and then the book kept going. And then it was like, okay, now I have these parts now, um, you know, and I chose to self-publish. And so there's different routes for different people, but I personally chose that route because I am very particular and I wanted a lot of control over the illustrator and, you know, the choices of colors and all of these things. And so I um, searched out for a specific illustrator who could do that job for me. Whereas I know if you go through a publishing house, they typically have in-house illustrators, which is fantastic and amazing. And honestly, it was a lot of work self-publishing. And so some other people may not want to go that route. Um, but that was the choice that I made. And at each step of the way, it was like, okay, I've made some progress now what do I do? And so I have to ask, ask for help. We have to ask for help. And even in getting the book printed and launched, it was all about asking for help uh, from my community and saying, I have this amazing, amazing project. Will you help me share it with the masses? And everyone was like, yes. <laughs> but I will say it was a very vulnerable process. And so that's where the keep going comes, you know, keep asking for help, keep going, because you will find your community who is excited and, you know, ready to support whatever it is you're about to bring into the world. I love that share so much because it's so, again, vulnerable and powerful. We have heard a lot of keep going, but the the reminder to ask for help is huge. And I'm really big on collaboration. And that's why I offer all of these different um, broadcasts and podcasts and things, because I, I do feel like it takes it takes a team to spread the yeah. word. Like you can scream into the void over and over and over, but a share, a comment, a kind word, those are all free things to do to support the creatives in your life. And um, I know you mentioned getting a coach and that's super powerful too. Having somebody that is like an accountability buddy is what we've been calling them. Um, one of my friends came up with that word a long time ago and it, it's cute and it works because if someone holds you accountable, it does, you know, like give you a deadline and it helps you see it actually happening and not say, oh, I'll get to it. Oh, I'll get to it because mm -hmm. I'm back to that. I'll get to it. But that person there, like deadlines and like support so big, yeah. so big. Well, thank you for happen. sharing that. Um, how can people well, let first let me see the book let me see the whole book yeah. okay oh, so I've got both hardcover and paperback so here's the book uh, Aria and Everyone Else's Feelings by Illustrator's Amazing Louis Chin born and raised in New York and uh, that was really important to me because this the story is set in a neighborhood like mine here in Queens and it was really you know I wanted someone who could you know help get the texture of like a New York City neighborhood. Um, and there were a lot of diverse characters. And so it was really important to me to have someone who understood, like, you know, had grown up in that environment. And yeah, Louis did a phenomenal job, as you can That's see. So, so, cute. so beautiful. Oh. So beautiful. It's so I good. Love it. I <laughs> very love magical. This. <laughs> and, yeah, so Aria, so the three-step process that Aria learns from her dad is to feel your feet, shake out the feelings, and imagine your protection. And she imagines a fox, a flying horse, and an eagle um, to come help her feel safe. And I've heard from lots of highly sensitive grown-ups that they wish they had this as a kid. <laughs> I wish I had it as a kid. It's yeah. perfect. And those are some of my favorite animals. I love big, beautiful birds, horses with wings, of course. And a fox has been my spirit animal for a couple of years now. Wow. Oh, goodness. Well, thank you for sharing. How can people find you, support you, and buy your book? Yeah. So you can, so the best places is Aria the book. So A R Y A, Aria the book.com, because that will take you to either the hardcover or the paperback, uh, because I'm, you know, I'm self-published. So I've got the hardcover that I'm selling through my website. The paperback is through Book Baby. It's a little bit smaller. If you like travel, if you have older kids, sometimes this is more helpful. Um, and then, but it is also the paperbacks have also available on Amazon, Bookshop, 
and all the bigger name places. Um, but the shipping takes longer through those places. So, but the, there's great reviews on Amazon. So if you want to read what other people have said about it, you can pop over to Amazon. Um, but as far as per purchasing, I, I do recommend Book Baby or uh, my website. So if you go to ariathebook.com, it's all there. Where do you get the most support? Is it if we go directly through you? Uh, yeah, so it's either KelseyFoxPenAboy.com or, or uh, the Book Baby Bookshop. So everything at AriaTheBook.com gives gives me the most return. <laughs> Let me make sure you get compensated for all your beautiful work there. So that's, Thank you. That's amazing. Cool. Well, before we hop off, is there anything else you want to share? I just thank you so much for this opportunity. And yeah, to anyone out there who had a dream, I, you know, I've been sharing this with kids. And when I was a kid, I wanted to be an author and I wanted to write a book. And, and yeah, so this is just a reminder. If you have a dream, keep going, ask for help and you'll get there. I'm so proud of you. Thanks again for shining one with me. <laughs>